Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you so much again for all the support recently. It's been absolutely amazing. I love Age of Sigma, but really you guys are my motivation to make these videos. Your support means absolutely everything to me. If I was to work out the pay that I'm getting through ad revenue for the amount of hours I'm spending making these videos and editing them, it would probably be one of the worst paid jobs you can imagine. So for me, the benefit of doing these videos is all the comments I get and yeah your positivity is just overwhelming so thank you so much right so back to looking at the model range reviews I absolutely love doing these they're really good fun they're not like the biggest videos on my channel but they're fun all the same and whilst we're waiting for news they're kind of good little filler videos I appreciate that most of you guys are probably gonna watch these only if you're really interested in that faction I just wish there was more news because clearly you guys respond to those videos so well you love me discussing what I think is gonna happen happen all of the leaks rumors and news but there just isn't enough of it but anyway i'm procrastinating let's look at some gloom spike gits now i have to warn you you are about to watch an entire video of me fanboying to the extreme over goblins these are by far at the moment my favorite faction in all of age of sigma i literally think they are about as close to perfect as a faction has come yet i also have a pretty underlying love for the caradrona overlords that comes and goes though. Gloom Spike gets. I just love them all the time. So you're not going to hear very much in the way of criticism for me. Like if I'm looking at this loom boss, this was originally from that jewel kit. Oh, what was it called? Here we go. This was the one, Loon Curse. So this was one of the exclusive figures that came in the box. That box was the one that sold out ludicrously quickly. And at the time, it was the only way to get these figures, which was really frustrating considering how fast they sold out. But yeah, we've got it available separately now. I would say it's a little bit on the pricey side. You know, it looks massive, I guess, in the picture, but really you're still looking at a standard size grot sitting on top there it's a fantastic model his little hood looks a little bit fragile for my liking and he's also a little bit precariously attached to the mushrooms but yeah highlights are the mask whatever this little scuttle bug thing is down the bottom there the moon creature i think there might be here we go a zoom in of him here <laughs> that is one of the coolest little things yeah it looks absolutely amazing i think that's something that i love about gloom spike gits they are just overflowing with personality but the third third thing I love is when I was looking at his war scroll because I don't actually own this model yet I realized that he has a different weapon option that you can build him with yeah, he's got his stabber or his moon cutter and if you look at the sprue there's the spear that you see in all of the pictures but he also has his cutter as well there's a perspective of the scale he's significantly bulkier than a boingrot bounder but you know not massive massive we're not talking a colossal squig here but he's kind of just sitting over the height of uh maybe I'm being a little bit unfair he's fairly big i suppose but yeah very very high up on my hit list of models i want what have we got next the mangler squigs i said in the video that i made i think yesterday or the day before now by the time you're watching this that my current favorite age of sigma model is this one i'm actually really hard pressed to say whether i prefer this guy or this because this is one of the most astonishing clever and incredible models i think games workshop has ever made the way that they balance together the posing of them the detail just everything about the way these models look i have totally fallen in love with i remember i think i had to actually put a poll on my twitter to try and work out which version of this box i should build and in the end i built this version the loon boss have we got a spinny version yeah here we go and basically it boiled down to again just minor things about the personality of the characters it looks like this guy here has got a sauce put on his head which is pretty amazing i loved that guy's kind of helmet it's like an insanely cartoony moon shaped but classic knight in shining armor style theme that they've got going on and i also loved the design of the armor on the mangler squigs but yeah i'm actually painting this model up at the moment i'm doing it very slowly i don't really have the time to do much painting but it is definitely a solid 10 out of 10 model this one it just looks so incredible i'd probably better stop looking at it because otherwise the whole video will just be me staring at this model again but the other thing i really do like the last thing i mention is the fact that i was worried initially that the attachment of the upper squig to the lower one 
would be a little bit weak considering it's mainly attached by these chains but actually it's quite cleverly attached through this weapon here and it certainly seems quite secure to me so yeah overall i was actually really happy with how robust the model felt despite how fragile it looks where do we go from here the gobba palooza now these are a little bit controversial i think uh, people have an issue with the fact that you can only take these as a single unit and they're quite expensive i think they're 200 and something points i must admit i do way prefer the idea of being able to pick and choose which ones of these I could take. The storyline behind them is that they are kind of the uh, personal advisors of Scragrot. So, you know, if they're his private retinue, it does make sense that you would field all of them together. But in terms of gameplay, I guess you would only really use them in a particularly big army. But then they just look so cool. This thing is just absolutely iconic. It's crazy. Like, what even is it? It's <laughs> some crazy four legged insect alien with a kind of brain mushroom growing out of it. And the moon iconography is absolutely absolutely perfect his face expression look at it it's absolutely stunning even the smallest little details like the way he's clearly just taken a massive chunk out of that mushroom and what's going on with these little creatures here i have no idea but it's absolutely amazing of the gobapalooza this guy is possibly my second favorite he looks really cool as well this guy i think was called the uh the brugit i mean it's absolutely mad how on earth he's not burning the top of his head by having a uh, coal fire on top of it I have no idea, but it's just absolutely brilliant. I mean, look at the little rack of things he's got on the back. He's got a jar of oozing stuff. He's got mushrooms, a dead toad, some bat wings or whatever the hell they are. The bubbles, they look absolutely fantastic. Everything about these models is very cool. Even the backstory of this guy and the fact that I believe the uh, Grots find him absolutely terrifying. They're just teeming with personality. This guy really reminds me of a 90s cartoon, but I can't quite think what. But yes, yeah, super, super cool models. Next, we get on to the Squig Herd. Again, I would say another 10 out of 10. I absolutely love them. I heard one person say they preferred the classic original Squigs. I would just find it so hard to go back to them knowing that these models exist. They're so detailed. They're bursting with personality. I mean, look at the little guy with the mushroom bagpipes. Have we got a zoom in of him? There we go. It's amazing. Look at his little cheeks. The Squig that's uh, eaten an unfortunate grot. Here we go. We've got a spinny view of that. Poor little guy. But again, it all just perfectly embodies everything the squigs are about. They're these wild creatures that they found in the caves. They're unpredictable. They're dangerous. You know, bashing pieces of metal together and hoping that they're going to run towards the enemy rather than back at you just fits absolutely perfectly. And again, look at this little squig herder with his mushroom on a stick. That's all you're basically going to hear me saying all video is how much I love these models. Uh, Molog's mob don't really need to talk about him too much. Of the different Dankhold Trogoths, he is possibly my least favourite. But that's it's not really saying much it's just that the other ones look so damn good what i will say is he's a fantastic way to get a cheaper trogoth into your army being only 15 pounds but yeah when you compare him to this this is another model that i find absolutely stunning and i really love how crazily different it is to anything else in the army and yet it works perfectly somehow having this thing in the middle of a gloom spike gets army just works and the little bit of uh, dwarven architecture that they've clearly found underground. The barnacles to suggest these things have been hibernating underground for years and years. The cannon. It's just an absolutely great model. Now, interestingly enough, I don't know what you guys think. I know there's two build versions in this box. There's this guy who I think is uh, the leader, Trogoth. Yeah, there you go. A Dankhold Trog boss. But of the two build varieties, I actually prefer the standard one. I think this is absolutely amazing. I'm actually glad that this is the generic one and this is the trog boss because in the armies I would build I probably wouldn't lead my army with a trog boss therefore it means I would include the one that I prefer in my army but even so this guy is still a fantastic model I think this paint job with that white background isn't really doing him justice the spider dangling off there too fragile for my liking I wouldn't even glue that on but the centipede creature looks amazing they've just got the sculpts absolutely spot on 
Uh, I'll come back to the spider riders in a moment. The start collecting kit is great. The only thing I would say there is I don't think it represents the best value for money of all the start collecting sets. And that's mainly because I think this guy, the loom boss, despite looking fantastic, he is a little bit pricey. I mean, he is basically just a single grot. And that is the one and only reason I don't own this model is because I thought he was a little bit pricey. But otherwise, I would have bought him the day that he was announced. I'm sure I'll end up getting him eventually because again the sculpt is amazing I love these jester like boots that they all have in this army the mask is fantastic and in fact I think the uh, front cover of the battle tome is based off of this guy but what an amazing model again perfectly posed amazingly sculpted bit of a shame it couldn't have come with maybe a couple of weapon options but really I'm not sure if I would include one in my actual army list I would be far more likely to include a loom boss on a giant cave squig or in the case of my actual gloom spike gets army obviously i've got my uh loon boss on mangler squig scrag rot again i absolutely love this model one of my favorite things about it is this um mushroom that's on his staff oh they're quite important i can't remember what they're called now okay here we go i've actually literally just gone and opened up the uh battle tome to have a look it's the bad loon boss fungus the mark of the bad moon's favor you can tell i love this army if i'm even gonna go and look up something as stupid as what that mushroom is but again despite the fact the model looks absolutely amazing what i particularly love about this character is so far i think he may be one of the characters in all of age of sigma that has been treated the best in the lore they gave him such a fantastic backstory he's absolutely crazy and yet clearly there is something very special about this particular grot everything about the way they've written him and designed him just makes him feel like an essential purchase for your collection i mean obviously i'm looking at this purely from a modeling perspective not from a rules perspective at the moment if you guys are interested by the way i am actually thinking of doing a series of getting started with each of these factions with some suggestions for list building but yeah let me know if you're interested in something like that the fungoid cave shaman this guy is a classic he's been around for ages with the dark oath war queen and the uh what was it the lord ordinator of the stormcast and was it the knight of shrouds but yeah another fantastic model Again, this is one I don't own, but I'm sure I'll get around to getting him at one point. But so much detail on the model. I can imagine it being a fantastic model to pick for a painting competition because there are just so many little details around him. I love this little spore thing. The centipede. You really do get the feeling that these um, grots are all living miles underground. And perhaps that has contributed to them going a little bit crazy. Ah, I missed out the Rock Gut Trogoths. Again, another set that I absolutely love. And funnily enough, this was actually a set that I didn't like at first. But they have grown on me so much over time. I think when I first saw them, I was expecting something a little bit more Tolkien and Lord of the Rings inspired. But these actually have a far more classic folklore and fairy tale style look to them, which has uh, really grown on me over time and now i just see them as just an intrinsic really key part of the army just like the dank hold trogoths i also love the fact that there are little bits of variation so you can either give him this giant rock with a crystal bursting out of it or a piece of dwarven statue i think i'd have to go for the dwarven statue just for the uh lore point of view but yeah absolutely great kits it's a shame that i think in uh rules i prefer the where are they the fellwater trogoths i won't talk about these guys too much but these models have aged incredibly well i think they look fantastic i'm so glad they decided to keep them in the faction in fact, ah, this one actually is on a round base. Oh, here we go. They are supplying them with round bases. Why on earth have they pictured them on square bases then? But yeah, whatever. The stabbers and the shooters, they are, again, perfectly functional models for something as small as a grot. They've managed to make them very durable. There is plenty of personality here. They didn't really need to update this kit. There's nothing wrong with them. 
And if they were going to redesign them and make them more detailed and therefore potentially more fragile, I would actually rather just stick with what we've got, to be perfectly honest with you. But again, look at their little cutters in the shape of the Bad Moon. The face sculpts, I think, are particularly good. The cloaks look amazing. I equally love the shooters. You guys know I love my archers. And although these guys kind of suck a little bit in the rules, you would definitely be better off taking the stabbers. I'm going to have to go and pick up a box of these at some point anyway, just because I love these guys. Just look at how amazing these models are. What is not to like? The only thing I would say against that kit is if you look at Zarbag's gits, they've obviously updated some of the stabbers and shooters, and there is far more personality and detail involved. Like, here we go, look at that, it's absolutely stunning. It's very subtle, but there is definitely an improvement. Have we got any more to look at? Oh, in fact, are they all shooters? Yeah, it looks like they are. But again, look at this guy reaching for uh, mushrooms instead of arrows. In fact, it looks like he's just topped his uh, arrows with mushrooms but yeah absolutely stunning models right so logically where do we go from here the fanatics this is one of the units i have the biggest issue with and i was really frustrated when they announced these their rules their story the poses everything about them is fantastic they're an ambush unit that is really going to make the enemy think twice about charging an innocent weak looking unit of grots because my goodness the damage that these things can put out is absolutely insane but what do you think I don't like about this model? I wonder. It is, of course, the fact that they look so fragile. First of all, their hats have got the thinnest, longest little hood thingies on them. And second of all, they all have some form of chain and rope. It makes me nervous just looking at his hat and that weapon. And I think there's even one of the weapons somewhere. Yeah, this one where they've even frayed the rope right in the middle. I mean, look at that. Was it really? necessary to right in the middle of that add an extra weak point that to me is slightly baffling design but yeah i'm still in the process of trying to work out what to do with these because they're not the cheapest unit they certainly are the most fragile and i'm trying to work out if there's a way that i can build these uh, and make them a little bit more rigid i know that there's actually a fanatic in uh, zarbag's gits as well and funnily enough it was a complete accident but when i was gluing it together the chain actually ended up snapping so even though the design of this is far more sturdy and by the time he's all glued together it was really easy to fix it back together and by the time you have glued him together he's actually very sturdy I kind of just wish that there was an option to build them more like this rather than the um, really extended versions that they went for next let's look at the sneaky snufflers fantastic models with really nice face sculpts and I particularly love these uh, mushroom cages they have on their backs their weapons definitely look more functional which is great the sneaky snufflers are obviously a brand new design of squig like creature if i had a small small criticism of them it's the fact that they do look a little bit samey i guess it's a little bit difficult for a unit like this to make them look a little bit more individual but they do have really cool rules and i'm guessing you wouldn't buy too many of them anyway right if the mangler squig is my favorite unit in the army then squig hoppers and boingrot bounders are an exceedingly close second just look at them they're amazing so unbelievably crazy i'm so glad they made these models i'm still really struggling to work out whether i want to focus mine on uh, hoppers or boingrot bounders because i have a box of them that i literally haven't got around to building yet and for some reason there's something about the squig hoppers that just looks so good i actually overall prefer the design of them to the boingrot Boingrot Bounders just about but the rules of the Boingrot Bounders is so good. I'm thinking I'll build five and five but the problem there is you only get enough parts to properly make one boss because he has all this extra armor on his squig but yep they look amazing even the Boingrot Bounders I love their little lances like look at this guy with the mushroom on the end of them they look absolutely fantastic. It's funny how easy it's going to be for people to underestimate how powerful some of the units are in this army as well.
well. You really would not expect much from a Grot riding a Squig, but actually they're pretty powerful. But yeah, absolutely amazing models. I would say more or less faultless. There's nothing I'd change about them. I'd say maybe the only thing I'd change is the ability to add a, a second boss in there to make two units of five. And yeah, that's it for all of the uh, new characters and models. We've got some older models. I would say things like the Grot Spider Riders. To me, they're showing their age ever so slightly. I don't own any of these yet, and I think actually it might be the paint scheme is really not helping. I'm very, very, very particular about the uh, shade of green that they go for with these Grots, and I'm not really a fan of the way they've done it here, and that's probably influencing me quite a lot. Do we not have a spinny view? No, we don't. But yeah, showing their age, they definitely look a little bit more cartoony. I have fairly strong arachnophobia, and those things aren't really creeping me out that much, so they probably could do a better job there. But nothing particularly wrong with them. The Grot War Boss looks absolutely fine still. Stick him on a round base, and you probably wouldn't really realise he's that old. We've got the old Scarsnick model, still a classic, now uh, obviously in resin rather than metal. Do you know what? I'm actually tempted to maybe get one of these just for the uh, nostalgia factor from Warhammer Fantasy because he was pretty cool. The Shamans, they look okay. Maybe a little bit lacking compared to the Gobapalooza. And yeah, that just leaves the last two spider units. So we've got the Scuttle Boss. This spider is starting to look a little bit more unpleasant to me. And again, I just don't think they've done a very good job on the uh, painting here. If you actually look at the one that someone sent in there, that looks really cool. It's actually surprising, again, what difference a uh, paint job can make, even if Games Workshop are doing it. But yeah, I mean, stick that on a round base and that actually looks pretty decent. And finally, the Arachnorock Spider. This is actually a really superb model and an incredible centerpiece. Have we got a spinny version? No. It... Oh yes, here we go. But yeah, an amazing model. Pretty gross, but it does look absolutely fantastic. Now, just super quickly to finish off the video, the one thing I would say, because obviously I have to give some downside somewhere, I guess my main negative is what they left behind with the uh, Gits mob models. I love the uh, Goblin War Machines. They've got the Rock Chucker, the Doom Catapult or whatever it was called, the Spear Chuckers. I still love these models and I wish they would update them. We're talking literally like three kits here that I would definitely rush out and buy if they were going to update these for the uh, Gloom Spike Gits. So let's keep our fingers crossed that they will someday update these kits. It's not on the horizon. It probably won't be soon. But then then they did also have the uh, Wolf Fang Riders, I think they were called, and they have now updated these as Ripper's Snarl Fangs for an Underworld's Warband, and actually the War Scrolls are amazing. Not only are they amazing, but unlike the um, original models, they have given them the Gloom Spike Gits keyword. So again, these are very high up on my priority list to go out and buy, but it just shows you, look how fantastic it is when you take a classic model and you update them with the technology and design design team that they have at the moment. These look absolutely stunning and it's really a testament to just how good these models can look. So yes, please Games Workshop, do the same for some of the models you've ditched. I love archers and I would just as happily and soon see loads of these war machines. It's something I actually like about the 40k orcs that you can have these Gretchens with these crazy insane guns and machines firing from the back row and yeah i think that's something i really do miss with this faction but yeah anyway thank you so much for watching the video let me know which faction i'm going to do next i'm thinking maybe sylvaneth but i guess we'll see don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys really soon